On this episode, I get to hang with one of my favorite legendary chefs. This is Gary Vay, Nerd Chuck, and this is episode 211 of the Ask Gary V Show. I'm very excited to be here at Red Rooster in Harlem with this wonderful, wonderful human being that I've known from for a long time from afar growing up in the wine business watching the food culture world. Uh, recently we've been able to spend yeah. some time together. Uh, I've really personally enjoyed that. Thank you. I think we have a lot of similarities. I learn every time I hang out with you, there's always something, but it's never the stuff that I thought. It's not like we discuss wine. Yes. We actually talk about all the Life. other stuff. Life. Life, exactly. That's great. Why don't you tell the uh, few that don't know who you are, uh, who you yeah. are, my friend. My name is Chef Marcus Samson. I have a restaurant here in Harlem, and it's called Red Rooster. And I've really been able to discover the world and discover myself through food, hard work, but also through the restaurant industry. And I'm still just as curious and love this industry because essentially it's about people, neighborhoods, and community. And this restaurant, Red Rooster, at its best, uploads all that. That's great. And so why don't you give, because I know this a little bit, why don't you give everybody, you're gonna be humble, but I want to establish it, yeah, and then yeah, yeah. India, we'll get into the questions. Give a little, give a little bit of your, not like from the beginning, but like no. from the beginning of your restaurant career. Sure. Paint me a picture. So, What's your first job in the restaurant industry? My first job was, like most chefs, a dishwasher. Yep. We're actually making meatballs with my grandmother. Okay. And that's, that's a great start. Yep. Right? Playing top chef at home before there was even a top, top chef, chef against my sisters. Yep. Uh, How losing, old are you at this point? Uh, that's six, seven, and they're like yep. nine and 14. So I lost. Yep. But the idea of making shit matters. Yes. And making what we came from. Yes. Right? Making herring, pickling. And you know, our big thing of pickling, and most sweets have a whole summer house and a basement where they preserve food, was because we were afraid of the Russians. I get it. We were convinced that the Russians would come, so we had to store food. Just in case, or Just when they case. come. So this is like, that's really where that make it, the art of making something. On my dad's side, everyone was a fish, fisherman, so I had it really from both sides. Big aspirations, big dreams, got scholarships to go to Switzerland, France, work in some of the toughest environments ever. Loved it. But really, the breaking point for me was, after France, I went to Japan. Changed everything. Because? Japanese food at that point wasn't not What year is it? On, uh, I want to say 90, 91. Okay. Wasn't even on the world map outside Japan. Right. right? Sushi we, culture, even in New York or SF, yeah. was non-existent. Non-existent. And for me to stand there and just learn from these guys, and you, and not you, even understanding what they were doing, but knowing that they got it, and I don't, in order for that me to That excited you. Oh my God. And I had to be, really listen, and just learn, and learn, and learn. And it changed my perspective on food. It really did. What, what, for somebody, for some of the novices or the people that are curious, what, what would you say in a sentence changed? Well, first of all, raw food, right? <laughs> right. And then in France, we had to cook with heavy creams and sauce, which I liked, which I sure. was great. Precision. Uh, their Tight, right? Yeah, like the commitment to tra their tradition. Yes. Not looking outside. Right, France isn't the gold no, standard. No, no, we, it's about us here. Yep. And this is how we roll. Yes. And umami, which I didn't even know was umami at that point, but that flavor point between, you know, miso, sweet, yes. salty. So it taught me a lot. But, again, being black in Europe at that time with ambition not just to work in a restaurant, but to be but the to guy. own the restaurant, a French chef told me, he was, he was very, very clear to me, he said, listen, I'm gonna give you a piece of advice. Get out, get to the States. I know you wanna own your business. It's not happening it's here. It's not happening here. And you could look at that in two ways, like he was very rude, he wasn't. He, sort he was of trying like to help. Cut through. He was, he was trying, trying to help. help. And it was game changing for me, so I came to the States. You know, it's interesting, we talk about this, uh, this just a little side note, we'll get back to the show. It's literally how I think about my business shows and content. It doesn't taste so good when I'm like, you're lazy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but I'm just trying to help. Yeah. And it really helped you. How does that work with uh, the millennials? Millennials are just like every other generation. Yeah. There's unlimited lazy people at 50 and 60. Yeah. I think the millennials have a bad rap. I think it's old man and old women talk on them. That's good. That's I really good do. I, I, I think there's tons of millennials that are hustlers. Yeah. 
Um, I do think they've lived in a great era, but I think Gen X did too. I mean, I think yeah. I think every generation that gets away from generations that fought in wars mm. is mm. softer because they can't even understand the yeah. alternative of all the luxuries. When you're complaining about not being able to afford an iPhone yeah. versus your grandfather running on a beach and getting shot in the face and dying, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's a very big difference. We see it also in athletes <laughs> if you compare sort of like Muhammad Ali's generation since this is just so in front of us versus the generation of course, now. Athletes, kind of, athletes 30, 40, 50 years ago yeah. had to work during the off yeah. season. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, of yeah, course, right. of right. course. India, let's get into this show. Show. Yes, the show. First one from Jared. Jared. Jared asks, as digital is evolving, what could TV chefs be doing to keep their audience engaged with the community? I like that. Mark, you know, this is a good opportunity. Yeah. You know, uh, as digital evolves, TV chefs, how sure. do they evolve? This is, you've watched this, being in the food industry. You know, I, you know, right now, I'm saying, oh my God, I'm taking selfies every day. When did entrepreneurs become rock stars? You, probably seven to 10 years ago, looked at all your homies. You guys used to, you had to be sitting around. I know how you guys roll, because sommeliers do the same thing. Four o'clock in the morning, spotted pig somewhere, wherever you are, and you're sitting there, and you're saying, when the hell did we become, like, this is what happened a decade ago. So I think it's progression that came from two or three different ways, Right. right? First of all, Julian, Shaq, Papan, 100%. set the table. Those two set the but table. But then Emerald really became absolutely. part of pop, pop culture. culture. Absolutely. And then Bobby really took it there, right? I don't think the word TV chef's gonna, gonna leave. It's really about media. Whatever you watch it on, that's essentially what, what's gonna matter, right? Um, so the screen, um, for us, was also about figuring out Sometimes we do long form, sometimes we do 15 second videos. Sure. I'm sure in five years, those 15 second video is gonna be five seconds. Or, or I'll be honest with you, what we're producing is we're going 20, 30 minutes. I'm basically producing a reality show, yeah. a documentary on a two to three time a week basis. So there's a, I think there's a, gonna, con, good content's good content. Content, people's gonna find content. Do you, does it come natural to you or I feel like when I look at you from afar, you're such an operator. You're such a chef operator. You're running businesses. How about the media side of things? Has it come natural or has that been something you know it's important but it's not, doesn't come that natural? You know, I'll tell you, it's a couple of things. For me, uh, being adopted kids in Sweden, we were constantly stared at. Not necessarily in a bad way but we were always in the center. And right. So it, I look at it almost as the same thing. It's like, okay, you have something to say. Don't cry about it. You want people to come to this space and make it sticky. You gotta communicate that. And you gotta communicate it hard if you're gonna cut through the clutter. This yes. is a clutter space, and we either wanna have customer or don't. So yes. we want it, we ask for this, engage. Yes, got it, very good. Um, from SMT. Yeah, I'll jump in real quick. I would say new platforms always offer the best opportunities. This is good advice for everybody. Yeah. Right now, he, and I'm saying this out loud for him and his team, because I want him to, yeah. he should very much look at Musical.ly and if he cooks behind music on Musical.ly, yeah. he could be the DJ Khaled of Musical.ly and it could change his life. I'm being dead serious. Can we pick that? Can we like, pick, why, why I feel, this, I feel, why is this coming, like, I what's feel, going on? What's, what's going on, Actually, what's, go, what's going on? I'll tell you what's going yes. on, I'll save you time. Yeah, save me time. They know that you say no to a lot of things because yeah. you're busy in this and yeah. nature and you, them oh coming God, to you with Musical.ly, I'm on their side. Not okay. I'm on their side. <laughs> but Marcus, I'm being dead serious. Yeah. If you were to make a commitment for yeah. 30 days to make three videos a day yeah. of cooking behind music on Musical.ly, I am convinced. Done, done. You I'm, have to, I'm, a, I'm, a, I, I'm yeah, a strange character. I'm yes. gonna check in 17 yes. days and blow up your spot. Yes. I'm gonna use this clip yeah. and then it's gonna be fuck you Marcus yes. is the video. Like, so you have to understand. In? Stand in line for that okay. line though. There's okay. a lot of- <laughs> <laughs> So for everybody, oh, I'm starting to articulate this, this D-Rock, this is gonna go somewhere. I, I've been saying it, but I've never said it direct. Yeah beachfront property. The first people that bought at Malibu, the first people that bought in the Hamptons, yeah. the first people that bought in Manhattan, the first people that bought in Dumbo. When you buy up the real estate that becomes the market first, you get a better deal. DJ Khaled, yeah. if you try to execute now on Snapchat, it's, it's noisier. Ashton yeah. on Twitter, it would have changed his career. Musically, whatever else you want to take a look at, every time there's something new or a new way to do things. For example, yes. we are crushing video on Facebook right now. We're committed to it, I'm hiring more people because right now it's important to Facebook which means it's getting more reach. I'm very focused on it. So either new platforms that are emerging and Snapchat is still that, still. Gary, I have to ask you. Yes, please. You you live in many worlds, right? You're an immigrant, Yes. you're an entrepreneur, Yes. you're in young media, new media, but you also have a lot of friends that are 
you know, much older than you, but also, you know, almost like mentors, but they do business with you. How do they respond to your sort of cutthroat success? My, my thing has worked for me progressively yeah. because at first, I, I've, I basically have started from out of my mind and completely an idiot to he's been right for so long, yeah. he's probably, it's unbelievable how 70 year old tycoons yeah, yeah. and other people that are winning now come and look at me when I say anything. I feel like in another five or seven years, yeah. I'm like, okay, listen, here's what you do. Go naked, <laughs> cartwheel, and make it a GIF on, and I'm, I said GIF, not GIF, and make it on schmoogashmooga.com that's one day old, and I feel like very established people will be like, all right, all right you know? I'll do it. So, so what's happening, and I'm sure you felt yeah. this in your career with food, as you build reputation, yeah. and you know the good thing about reputation, and you've been the beneficiary of this as well, it's earned. Yeah, like, it is. Like people don't want to listen to me. No, 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 as a matter of no. fact, a lot of people that listen to me and give me respect do it begrudgingly. Yeah. Because I do it with a different kind of vibe than oh, they no, want to, ex- you know? This is, this is very direct and, and so, very smart. And so I think what's happening is but just. I feel like I save time when I listen to you, honestly. No, well, I appreciate you're very, it. You're very direct, like no. And it's not like really thought about how Correct. That's when interesting. This in this Time is something I value a lot, so yeah. that makes sense. Makes me feel good. India. Uh, from Essence, Stamp and Coin asks, "What's the biggest change tech is bringing to the restaurant industry?" Industry. Connectivity to the the biggest change to tech to the restaurant is connectivity with the consumer. So the editor used to be, you know, the guard maybe with a couple of newspapers, a couple of magazines. Listen, that consumer out there that is connected to that is now the most important person. This happened in the wine business. It was Wine Spectator, it was Robert Parker, yeah. period. New York Times for yeah. you and maybe a couple of other things. Gary Vee wasn't up there? Not yet. <laughs> I started a process, yes. other, and then it was technology. I rode the wave, yeah. it wasn't me. It was me understanding what YouTube and Twitter was gonna be. Mm. Instagram, so my friend, do you know Andre Mack? Yeah. Andre's my boy, like, like yes. I remember those conversations He's early on. In Harlem. That's right, I yeah. was like, Andre, this is happening. He's doing a nice job. I'm watching him on the gram right now. Like, I just knew that was coming. And, um, and I don't know what's going on in the restaurant world. I, I feel it's probably similar to what's going on in the wine world. A big wine spectator and a big wine advocate score still really matters. Absolutely. I'm sure the same way a New York Times review matters. But now, there are tastemakers, uh, uh, you know, but the world is not so, either or, it's both. That's right. right. It's not that's right. where there used to be that. one option. Absolutely. I mean, all my friends and I look at Foursquare and look at pictures of the food when we get to restaurants. Like, that. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Tristan Lex- is a good friend of mine. Yeah. One of oh, the guys yeah. from um, Foursquare. There you go. Tr- Tristan Walker? Yeah. He's the best. Yes. He really I good love guy. that dude. Yeah, he's a good guy. I love his talk about Bevel breaking the mold. I, rem- I was an investor in Gowala. And remember, which was a competitor for Square, and I l- remember being on a call with a bunch of the investors and yeah. people on the team. I'm like, this guy Tristan Walker is a problem. Yeah, <laughs> he would. I respect that at the highest compliment. As it, it's meant as the highest yeah, compliment. Yeah. I've, yeah. you know, I've, uh, I've been an enormous fan yeah. of his uh, for a long time. And you know, his get up. You should have him on the show. His get up is amazing. Bevel you know, from Queens. He's the best. Ivy League schools, but best. The hustle way in. Best. You know what best. I mean? I'm from Daniel. What's Daniel. Be- Daniel asks. The best way for a culinary virgin to step up to the plate? What's the best way for a complete culinary virgin to step up to the plate? To step up to the plate. I well, I mean, to the plate. yeah, I get it. <laughs> I mean, really, first of all, get Thanks, a Indiana. friend uh, that you really, you know, love, adore, admire, and cook with you. Because once you do it by yourself and you don't know anything about food, it's hard because it's a, it's so many things. It's arugula better than this lettuce, and it's a lot, right? So if you cook with somebody that you trust and you're gonna have fun with. At the same time, drink some wine and you know, stick to it for 30 days. On the 17th day, I'm gonna call you if you're not sticking with yeah. it. <laughs> sure. My man. Yeah. Marcus, can I ask you, I'm gonna go side question, a little yeah. question for me. One of the things that I've enjoyed in the food scene, obviously living in New York has been amazing for this, is when a new thing pops up. Yeah. And when I mean a new thing, I actually mean an ingredient or a spice or a thing. Yeah. Like, is there any vegetable or fruit or spice that's emerging right now in the scene? I'm fascinated by yeah. that. So first of all, there's very little things in the food scene that are new. I right? know that. Because it really, it Is might it be new interpretations? New. Yeah, well, what, what happened is, go back to the France scenario, when we brought so much from just Europe and France and eventually Italy and Spain. There was still a lot of opportunity. Yeah. So what we look at now as new is very often from not even Japan anymore, maybe Korea, but also now a little bit from Peru. 
it's definitely a strong market. Peru. Peru. And what do they America. what do they got going on? No, because you think about extension of the sushi culture is obviously tiradito, ceviche, and those stuff yes. that we here still don't know that much about. Yes. And then the last thing that's going to come even more is Africa. So when I brought a, the oldest spice plant in the world to America, you know, Berbere, which is the oldest spice plant, Ethiopia looked at me like, that's not new, we've had it forever. <laughs> <laughs> or if you think about argan oil that comes from uh, Morocco. Argan oil is mostly used in makeup, right? It's yes. all over. Yes. But cooking wise, it's a pretty new oil here in the West to cook with. The Middle East and you know, Southern Mediterranean people have been cooking with it for 2,000 years. What about meats like from Africa? Like, will that, do you think 20, 30, 50 years? Well, the cuts might the cuts. change, you know, because the meats are pretty traditional, right. right? But then the cuts that we're using might change. And also, that is old school. Right, well, of like course. when the chef's talking about something's it. old school somewhere always. Exactly, but we've haven't maybe focused on that country before. That's right. I love that. All right, India. Next one. Uh, CJ. Listen, listen. We have a guest. Can we just have a little bit of cornbread with tomato, tomato jam? We have guests. Jordan, I'm not eating. <laughs> we have yeah. guests. So let's do it. I'm not I have a guest. I come to your house. From, um, can Martos, I get some jerk chicken? Martos. Okay, let's have guess. Where do you see the coffee uh, industry going? Oh, astronomy. All right, let's do it. Bartos asks, where do you see the coffee industry going in terms of gastronomy and coffee shops? That's a good question, the coffee industry. The coffee industry, first of all, I mean, it started from Ethiopia and places like that in that region, but now I think you have 80 countries producing coffee, so that's like, it's very, very, very global right now, right? So. I still think we're just here in terms of intense beans and in terms of the coffee culture. Reminds me of the wine business in the 90s. Exactly, so the mixing, I think we'll see more coffee and wine bars together. I where agree. you have coffee in the cocktails. The way you see fresh juices going in with cocktails now, you, that will happen. You know what's so interesting? I've, I've been thinking of a concept of a bar that is just 24-7. Yeah. Because, and it goes from coffee to juices yeah. to tea to wine to post game, <laughs> to, yeah, I mean, like really, I think there's a really interesting model from a place that's open 5.30 a.m. to four in the morning in New yeah. York that is very hardcore structured around four to six different sure. afternoon tea, mm-hmm. right? Like coffee, juices, afternoon tea, wine. But all of those things have, what we're talking about here is they have intense like flavors, idea. right? Because that coffee and that juice is based on intensity. Yes. Espresso with fresh juice. Yes. Next to it, we'll say ginger and orange. So people today want intense flavor. They want smaller shots of oh something, God. but really intense. So that can be done. Wet bar or something. Like, yeah. Just like it's just liquid. Are we thinking names now? I just want to open it. <laughs> I may. India? Last one from Tommy. Tommy. Uh, Tommy asks, any suggestions on how to use social media to promote a quality imported olive oil? Wow. I mean, social media, why wouldn't you use it, utilize it for any product, right? First of all, olive oil, people love olive oil already, right? So you want to tell, tell a little bit, terroir, where it's from, and then also how it's used best case scenario, but also maybe a surprise. Olive oil as an ice cream or olive oil in a cake. Something that is just a little bit off center. I think social media would be a perfect platform so you can cut through. I have a very good answer to this. I believe, really, I feel excited about this. Influencers, 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 ask, ask, ask. I would go to Instagram, search hashtags, olive oil, but then cheeses and breads and cakes and ice creams, Uh, and I would literally, for 11 hours a day, this is your business. You have an imported olive oil, like what are you doing? Like, you know, what are you doing? Yeah. 7 p.m., 8 p.m., 9 yeah. p.m., 10 p.m., 11 p.m., 12, what are you doing? You're doing a lot of bullshit a lot of times. I would allocate six, seven hours a day and I would literally, you search hashtags, you find somebody's account. It's a sous chef yeah. in a Kansas City restaurant that has 813 followers, but the Gmail accounts there and say, look, I'm importing amazing olive oil. I'd like to send you a bottle. I'd like you to put, post a picture of it on Instagram if you have it, and then you wait. That person replies and goes, sure. They've never had anybody reach out to them and give them olive yeah, yeah, oil yeah. for free and they're pumped. Or they write back, yeah, but I'm an influencer. I get $400 a photo. And you're like, well, that's not enough for $800. But it's just literally, Literally, I actually believe that if you have a product, like an olive oil or any product, that influencer marketing on Instagram right now, and then, and then unbelievably dirty, get dirt under yeah, your yeah. fingers, grinding one by one, Gmail, 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 click on an account, find their Gmail, Gmail them, Gmail, Gmail like I, eight, I nine, that. 10 hours that. a day. 
I and, love it. And then, you should come up every fucking day up here. Yes. We should talk about this. Done. I have so many things now Done. that yes. these poor bastards have are to dead. Deal They're with, dead. And I love this. But the big part of this, guys, the big part of this is to ask. Can you take this camera away and just rick, <laughs> just direct the conversation right here? <laughs> the way. Because this is much better. Uh uh-uh, uh, uh uh. It's easy to pass on them. I You're know, the bottleneck. Of course. After You're the bottleneck. 30, 30 days. 30 days? Yes. I'm, you know, ask. So many of you are just not asking. You, mm. The fear of rejection mm. or the laziness of the execution Hello. is stopping Hello. people from winning. Hashtag Every, laziness. I think that is a very, very strong It word. is one of those two things, Marcus. Mm-hmm. I'm telling you right now, if you actually have a product and you actually spend 10 hours a day, and I love when people are like, 10 hours a day. I was running a very large wine retail business and when Twitter came out, I went pot committed, all in, and I was spending 10 hours wow. a day. I built my entire brand from that ecosystem. It wasn't mainstream media. No, it no, wasn't no. winning, you know, an award and having the entire Don't press. Don't my awards. I'm not belittling. Whoa, 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 I'm not belittling. I, I saw that. I'm not belittling. You, he caught it. He's yeah. right. <laughs> He's right. No, but 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 I've never had. You no, know, I get it. I I'm, get it, I get I'm it. happy for yeah, you. Yeah, that yeah, was yeah, fun yeah, to watch, yeah, and yeah, I'm happy for yeah, everybody. Yeah. I'm, ha- but like, it's unbelievable what 10 hours a day yeah. of asking 850 I'm chefs so a day it. on Instagram, 109 chefs. We'll take a photo with your olive oil. Yeah. 39 moms that have a lot of other moms that give a crap, we'll take a photo with your olive oil and it's just the work and the asking. Smart. And it's free. Like These you glasses, are you building a Trump you? No, <laughs> I'm definitely. <laughs> be you? I don't, I don't want to get into fights with any judges. Yeah. Uh, but this is good, this is actually really good education. Free. Yeah. For life. I love that, it's good. Question of the day, Marcus, you get to ask the question of the day you get to ask them any question you want. There's a lot of entrepreneurs, a lot of business people. Yeah. Um, it's also probably a crowd that is probably that mainstream foodie. You can go anywhere on this. No, I, I know. Anything you want. But I actually want to ask you because I want to no, ask. Don't ask me, okay, ask so them. We went, Hundreds of answers we on Facebook from, and YouTube. Snapchat, we went from Twitter, Instagram to Snapchat. Yes. What's the next platform that will have the same cut through over the next three to five years? Answer it, my friends. You keep asking questions, Will, Keep answering them. What do you think? I think Musical.ly is the first thing that's got a chance. Mm. And I don't think you can ever answer it yeah. because you have to react to it instead of predicting it. It's too hard to predict. Somebody's building it right now. Mm. You just don't Where know. Where are those guys from? From uh, uh, West? Be, No, you know what's so funny? They could be anywhere. There could be two girls right now in Kansas City. They'll yeah. probably end up in San Francisco because yeah, that's yeah. where the VCs and the tech talent is. Yeah. But you know, Snapchat's in LA. Yeah. Pinterest started in Pennsylvania, moved to San Francisco. Facebook started in Boston, yeah, yeah, yeah. moved to San Francisco, so I'm not sure. Uh, just to, have you, ha, have you, told him he's have you guys, up. have you guys looked at it? <laughs> yeah, we, we just and did. Here's, yeah, cool, and honestly, spend one hour Googling Musical.ly, read all the articles, yeah. get it down, um, and then reach out to mainstream media, like whatever context you have. Yeah. They're dying to write an article about it. Okay. So like I could already see the headline, like is Marcus the DJ Khaled of Musical.ly? And that alone almost starts it being that. Love it. Thank you so much. You're welcome. What's up guys, hope you enjoyed the show. Uh, please, do I get to link it up anywhere? Is it like in here? Or is it down below? Is it in print or is it in my video? Uh, no, it'll be down to your left. It's here, down to my left? Like right here there's a button? For them to subscribe to my YouTube video? Yeah, it's a little buggy thing? That's right guys, click this! That's right, use that.